Grand Rising Bunnets. You know, everybody has a tagline when they open. Maybe that's going to be my new tagline. I was not going to go live today, but here we are. <laughs> so what I'm going to be talking about is something that is a hot topic that everybody has been talking about so many so many teachers so many coaches so many guides so many practitioners talking about the topic of feminine and masculine and there's so many teachings out there and by no means is this going to be a compre a fully comprehensive video but i want to share some of my thoughts about this topic and hopefully in a way that's balanced and loving and invites us all into a deeper conversation. So, <laughs> by the way, I think you should do one thing every day that scares the shit out of you. And even as somebody who is an orator and who is a teacher and who loves speaking, going live for me still after I've been creating videos consistently since 2018. I have probably recorded over 700 videos. And still, it takes me about five minutes before I actually feel settled, especially going live. Um, so, you know, I don't know if I'm ever gonna get over that. Anyways, I just wanted to share that. So let's, let's jump into it. And that also gives me some time to settle into the space. Um, it's weird, you know, because I can't see you guys. And so I can't, I can map energy, but I can't map faces and expressions. And that's why I like being in person with people and being live with people or, or having a real time interaction, right? Where you can hear the responses and you can actually have a conversation. Uh, so my hope is that this maybe has a conversation like format and you can leave some comments and maybe you can share your perspective and what you've seen um, around this topic. So first of all, I love that people are talking about this conversation. I know that it's a very hot topic. It's a very uh, spicy topic that brings up a lot of emotions for people. Just because, I mean, duh, like we've been, we haven't really seen a healthy version of a, of a feminine fully embodied uh, essence and a, and a fully embodied masculine, like you could say Christ, you could say maybe some of these ascended masters, right? We're holding that template, but I'm saying no person really walking around right now is, is fully rehabilitated in either one of those energies. And so... I'm glad that we're having the conversation and I can tell how triggering this conversation is for people depending on how you're perceiving certain language that people are using, things like submissive, surrender, right? When we talk about the feminine, that's a very triggering thing for people, it's for women. Um, and I think that there's some really valid points that I want to address there and why that might be triggering for some people. Um, but there's also just, there's a lot of, of people trying to claim their power and, and trying to come back to themselves. And it can be easy to get confused about, you know, what are the, what, what are these relationship dynamics that were being sold by, by men and women who are teaching polarity dynamics or, you know, things like that. So I'm glad that we're talking about it. And I think it's good to listen to all the different arguments that people have because it gives you a pulse on what we need to still work through and where the pain points are for us. And, and really so that we can decide for ourselves as individuals, what do we want the internal relationship with our feminine and masculine to be like? And what do we as individuals want that to look like in our own personal relationships? Um, you know, to start off, there are very uh, tangible and concrete uh, 
ways that these two energies operate, right? Like there's a reason why that's a natural polarity. There is a law of polarity on this planet. So that's, that's here. And, and those emanations, those frequencies, the feminine frequency, the masculine frequency, they have their own, you know, receptive, the penis, the vagina, right? We know all the symbolism of, of how those energies are, are functioning and how we see very clear, right? Female, male embodiments on this planet. And I realize that we also have a lot of other types of embodiments. Um, and that's a whole other conversation. And I definitely will never be somebody who wants to um, alienate anyone or cast judgment or just want to have a, a nuanced and discerning conversation about these things. So, you know, each and every one of us has the feminine and masculine energy within us, right? We have inherent polarity of all kinds within us. You could say that all of the, the polarities underneath that are maybe stemming from these larger, broader categories of masculine and feminine. And then we take that into our relationships in different ways, the way that we embody that, and then we, we create some type of a synergy through union. But that's first through having installed, hopefully, or or running parallel alongside, right, where we're resurrecting our own inner union template while we're in union. Um, but we can do a lot of that work, right? A lot of that work is just something that we're going to have to do on our own. But we take that into the union. So the first thing is, is that this is really not something to be, we have to talk about the external component because the external union with you and another being is 1000% a part of that template. It's a part of that template manifest here in this reality. And it's really largely an internal process because in order for you to even synthesize with that energy and for that other being to synthesize with you, there has to be a certain level of coherence. There has to be a certain level of, of working on that inner template for your in yourself in order for that to, to go well, right, with the other person. So, you know, there are obviously um, gay relationships, lesbian relationships, and you can have the same, it doesn't matter if it's two women, it doesn't matter if it's two men, we're still working with the polarity within the couple. And, you know, so this is not just strictly to a man and a woman. Um, there are many people and beings on this planet where that is a part of their template. That's an organic part of their template. And that is actually the, the male and the male or the female and the female in their own energetic blueprint. The combination of, of their union partner, which is actually a same sex, is is perfectly sacred. And it's actually exactly what they're supposed to do in this lifetime. So we can't get hung up on you know, anything that's going to be dogmatic. Um, we want to be loving and, oh, wow. There's so many comments that I didn't even, uh, see. I'll, okay. I'll go back and read the comments at the end. So some of the reasons why, oh, before I go into the reasons why I think it's pissing some people off and, and the important, the important parts to mention about that I think one of the, and this is just for me personally, but I think one of the things that kind of bothers me about some of the ways that these polarity teachings are being taught in relationships is that there is not the element of God. You know, if you're going to strictly teach about the feminine going to surrender to the masculine, and this is really going to lead me into that, that next point then two things have to be understood. One is that that man is coherent enough and rehabilitated enough to be connected to God so that the female or the, let's say in this, when we're t talking about a heterosexual dynamic, she is not surrendering to him, to this mortal being. What she is surrendering to and receiving in that moment is 
the spirit of Christ is God and the essence of that architecture in that man, that's what she is connecting to. And she is connecting to that because she has that same pillar, not because, not as her source to God, right? She has her own source and her own connection to God. And he is also plugging into that and honoring the God that is within her, the Christ that is within her, the Christ of fear, whatever, how, whatever fucking word you want to put on it, okay? So it's not about, you, this is a really important thing, I think, because if you don't have that understanding and you don't have that foundation and there's not a higher structure and order to who, you know, both of you need to be directly connected to God and source and your own higher self and your own spirit, first and foremost, that comes first and then the relationship. And it's, it's the surrendering and the honoring of that core essence within each being right because we are flawed humans who are still in this process of of sifting through everything it's actually very this is why this nuance has to be here because it could potentially be dangerous for someone to think that you know without understanding what it is they're really submitting to and just assuming that that they should submit to this person. And, and I'm not saying like every person is responsible. When you go out and you see a teaching, you're responsible for digging deeper into that teaching. So even people who are putting this out there, they're not responsible for, for somebody who takes that in a dangerous way. The people who are consuming that content are responsible for discerning for themselves. But what I want to say is that, you know, there are a lot of women, let's say in this case, who have been very abused. I know there's a lot of men that have been too, but I'm just speaking in the, for this example. So a little, lot of women that have been abused that are just coming out of those situations and are just learning how to have their own boundaries and love themselves. And if they come into contact or if you come into contact with a teaching like that and you don't really fully understand the bigger picture of that and you just go and you surrender to this being this mortal male which like I said nobody on this planet it's not really safe to just I'm not saying it's not see this is why it's so nuanced. I'm not saying it's not safe to surrender within a safe container within your partnership but what I'm saying is that's a that's people are going to perceive that on a whole spectrum and so what it doesn't mean is to surrender to this person completely and just give, right? That's not what, and I think that there's a lot of polarity teachers who are trying to get that nuance across and say, this is, this is what we're saying. We're not saying you're going to submit to whatever that man is, because who knows what that woman's level of discernment is. And you don't want to just submit to any old thing. No, 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 no. But the organic part of this and why I think part of this teaching is being taught, why it's so important is because, you know, there is this feeling within a lot of women like they want to be able to move into that feminine energy, right? We've had the, the genders have been somewhat reversed in different ways on this planet. So women have been very masculinized because of the patriarchal slant. And so they want women have that desire to have that surrendering, right? But that needs to first and foremost be an internal process with Christ and with God. Can your own feminine be rehabilitated and surrender to that? Because once you know what that frequency is, you are not going to surrender or submit or allow your energy to be aligned with a male who doesn't host that same frequency. And you're also going to know that that is a mortal being who is flawed and is traumatized. And, and that's why I'm saying just like, you know, when we talk about bonding patterns, it's not safe to farm our inner children out to other people. That doesn't mean we can't bring them out to play. That doesn't mean we can build trust. We can't build trust with people and have amazing um, experiences of unification. But we really need to be clear about who is at the top of that relationship. And that needs to be God. 
And if we don't have that, people are going to get really confused and we might have some very traumatized people taking these teachings and saying and thinking and maybe convincing themselves that I'm or or on the flip side. So that the woman might be saying, I'm surrendering to this guy, right? But it's actually a narcissist or a, or not a person that you want to be surrendering to and they're and they're like, you know, getting deluded in that trap or trying to contort themselves or contort their man into a weird role. And on the flip side of that, the man might be getting these teachings, these really distorted teachings without the true understanding of what that leadership means, right? We want our men to come into leadership. Of course, there's an aspect of the feminine that wants to be able to melt and be feminine and move out of that calcified, you know, hyper masculinity, of course. And of course, our men want to feel powerful and capable and like they can lead. <sighs> We're helping each other as our brothers and sisters. We're helping each other. We have to be careful, right? You can see a lot of the men who are taking in some of, the, of these teachings, getting a weird, distorted idea about what it means to lead, about what it means to be dominant, about what it means to be a man. And what that does is it perpetuates the feeling for the feminine, the ones that are going, they're looking at that and saying, see, that's not safe. This is if, if these guys are going to take this teaching and get a distorted idea, I don't want to go for that. And I think it goes for both sides. So I feel like that's really the majority of what I wanted to say. That feels pretty complete. I would absolutely love to hear your guys's thoughts about this in the comments and what's worked for you, what has been a pain point for you, and maybe what about this you agree with or disagree with, or I'm glad people are having this conversation. It may be a little wild, it may be a little crazy, it might be a little like, <laughs> wow, oh, it's a hot topic, but that's okay. All right. Um, why can't we just? So, co 22 Cosmic Journ Cosmic O Journer says, so jaded with all, with it all. Jaded feels to be an appropriate word since we're in the year of the water rabbit. Why can't we just rest in our complementary functions? Well, I'm going to tell you why we can't rest in our complementary functions. Because the genders on this planet, those energies, the essence of the masculine, the essence of the feminine, has been so oh, whoo, so fractured and so twisted up and distorted and abused that um, it's going to be a long time. I'm not saying it's not happening. I'm not saying that people aren't doing it. They're absolutely doing it. There are people on this planet who are, who are having healthy relationships and, and really growing with each other. But we are just not there yet. And, and I get it. You know, I guess it's, it's understandable to feel jaded. But this, this gets to be a very exciting time. Where, where we really get to do this. We get to do this with, within ourselves. We get to do this in relationship with our brothers, our sisters, our friends, our family, whoever. And then we can rest and we can have moments of resting into that peace together and that safety that we're learning to create again. All right, guys. <laughs> she said, yeah, I know it was a rhetorical event. Oh, well, that comment is probably a thought that a lot of people have. Why can't we all just fucking heal and love and rest in together? And I think that's a really good sentiment to hold. And I think that that's probably a thought and a feeling that a lot of people have. So let's keep doing things that align us towards that timeline. 
of resting in and finding that safety. These sparkly rings look like a sparkly princess. All right, bye guys.